solving oblique, not right triangles. Okay. Now, because the triangles are oblique, there's some things that are off the table, right? We can't use Pythagorean theorem on non-right triangles. We can't use trig ratios on non-right triangles. We have to have something else to do. And one of those things is called the law of sines. The one we're going to focus on today is the law of sines. So start top left of your page. Just draw a generic triangle, maybe seven or eight lines tall so you have room to label and do some things. But uh, we're going to develop the law of signs. You did this in geometry. If you had Algebra 2 honors, you did it in honors Algebra 2 also. So this is the third time for some of you to see this and uh, at least the second time for everybody in here. So the law of signs, but you've never done this. You've never developed it. I want you to take the triangle, and we're going to create an altitude. Your triangle doesn't have to look exactly like mine. We'll create an altitude of the triangle, and that creates uh, a couple of right triangles, right? So we have done this. Yesterday I showed you guys that we were going to use right triangle properties to solve non-right triangles. This is side A, this is side B, and this is side C. Guys, y'all really need to pay attention. Yeah, we'll get that off your mind. You don't need whatever was stolen unless it was your pencil or your notebook, which evidently for Miller it was. Um, all right, so let's call the altitude of this triangle. Let's give it a label. X. So this represents any non-right triangle. Any non-right triangle could be represented like this, right? This could be in a, it could be a, even a, it could be an obtuse triangle. It could be any type of triangle we wanted it to be. In this triangle, we have this altitude relationship. Let's talk about angle A. And these two pieces in the triangle on the left. Now that is a right triangle, so what do we know about the relationship between those three pieces of this triangle? What's the relationship between these three pieces of this right triangle? Okay, so that's that doesn't have that doesn't relate these three pieces. What you just said is true, by the way, but it doesn't relate these three pieces. The three pieces that I have in red. Somebody said it here. What? The sine function, right? That's the sine and the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So we know from what we're given here that the sine of angle A is equal to x over B. Sine of angle A is equal to X over B. Okay, let's go to the other angle. What do we know about this angle and these two pieces of that right triangle? We know the same thing, right? Sine of B is equal to X over A. Now, because X wasn't a part of my original triangle, triangle ABC, I want to try to get it out of the equation here. I want to get it out of the mix. So if I solve this uh, ratio or this equation on the left for X, you multiply both sides by B, and you get B times the sine of A equals X, right? And if you solve the equation on the right over here, do the same thing, solve it for X. By multiplying both sides by A, you get A times the sine of B is equal to X. 
Now, if both of those expressions are equal to x, then what does that tell us about those two expressions? They have to be equal to each other, right? If both of these things are equal to x, if x is equal to both of these things, then by the symmetric property, b times the sine of a is equal to a times the sine of b. And x is gone. X is no longer there. I'm, I, I can erase mine. You guys can leave yours in your triangle if you drew it. But that's no longer a part of what we've got, right? X has been removed. And now we could divide both sides by AB. And if you divide both sides by AB, and you'll see why in just a moment, we end up with... The B's canceling on the left. We have sine of angle A divided by side A equals the A's cancel on the right, and we're left with the sine of angle B divided by side B. So sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. All right. Now, because the triangle is completely arbitrary, A, B, and C could be swapped all around. The third side just follows from, you know, just general logic. The sine of C divided by C is equal to the sine of angle A divided by, si by side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by side B. And that is the law of sines. Okay, so we can use the law of sines to solve some not right triangles. Not all of them. There's another law that we'll learn on Monday that we would use to solve the ones where the law of sines doesn't apply. Okay, so we have this, the law of sines. And I want you to notice here that this is opposite of what we just wrote. This has A over sine A, B over sine B. And that's equivalent because if we start with any proportion... Two-thirds equals two-thirds, for example. Doesn't it follow that if you flip both sides, it's still equal? So one of the properties of proportions is that you can reciprocate them and the truth value stays the same. And we are going to use both, both of these derivations of the law of sines. So we'll use it both ways. And I'll explain when you use which in a moment. Okay, so that's the two ways you can write the law of sines. And the other one, which we're not, we're not going to discuss today, the law of cosines, when you can't use the law of sines, we have to use the law of cosines, and that's the law of cosines. Don't even write this down today. We're going to look at it tomorrow. Not tomorrow, Monday. All right, what we are going to have a look at, though, is the cases where you would use the law of sines and the law of so cosines. Whenever possible, the law of sines be, should be used because the law of sines is easier to use than the law of cosines. Look at the, look at the complicated laws of cosines. They're just more complicated to use than the law of sines. So whenever you can use the law of sines, use the law of sines because it's easier. All right. So we're going to identify the three pieces of information that's given to determine which method to use. Every triangle has six pieces of information. And we can't solve a triangle unless we know three of those pieces of information. You can't solve a triangle unless you know three of the six pieces of information. If you know three of the six pieces of information, we can find the other three. So we have to identify the configuration of these three pieces to determine which method to use. And here's the methods that we'll use. If we're given the information in angle-angle-side configuration... Angle, angle, side is going to be law of sines. You'll save yourself some time if you memorize these conditions. Okay. Angle, angle, side is law of sines. Angle, side, angle, if we're given information in the angle, side, angle configuration, then that's going to also be law of sines. And then there's a third case, 
um, side side angle is also the law of sines. Now the reason there's an asterisk there is because side side angle, if you're given information in the side side angle uh, configuration, this is called the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case of the law of sines, if we're given information in this configuration, we could have no triangles, not possible, no solutions, so to speak. We could have one triangle or the side side information could be two different triangles. These two conditions, nice and easy. The ambiguous case is a little bit complex. Okay, so it's good to be able to recognize what pieces of information have been given us. If we are given side side angle, side side angle is kind of one of those conditions where we have to know that's a special case. We got to look for special uh, circumstances. Could be no triangle, could be one triangle, could be two triangles. And we'll talk about why as we move through this. Now the other cases, side 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 and side angle side are both going to be law of cosines. All right, so how could you remember this? How could you memorize these to know which ones are which? Because this is going to be a time saver when you're, we're taking a test and you've got six, eight triangles to solve, and you have to look at the triangle and determine which method to use to solve it. All right, how could you, what's a rule you could come up with? What's something you see here? What do, take law of signs out of the equation, right? Take the ambiguous case out of the equation. If we, if we remove this one, what do the two law of signs scenarios have in common? They have two angles given, right? And what do the two law of cosines have in common? Two or more sides given, right? So the special case, the ambiguous case, side, side, angle, is law of sines. It doesn't meet the conditions of either of the, you know, it, it doesn't meet the condition of law of sines, but it meets the conditions of law of cosines. It's a little confusing. So you, you just got to somehow memorize these two things. But all of the cases where you have two sides or more is law of cosines except for side, side, angle. Law of sines is you have to have two angles given except for side, side, angle. So you just memorize the exception and you'll be good with that. Okay, and this is going to be a time saver if you can identify which method to use at the outset. All right, solve this triangle. Make a sketch. Good notes are going to be important to you tomorrow when you're working on this, and I'm not here. But you could always revisit the video if you'd like. All right. Now, do you see anything we could immediately find in this triangle? The third angle, right? If we're given two angles, uh, we can easily find the third angle by subtracting 45 and 75 from 180. And what do we get for the third angle? We get 60 degrees, right? So angle C is equal to 60 degrees. Uh, now I've got two more pieces to find, the two sides I have to find. The given information is going to tell us which case here. Do what? Law of sines because we were given what? Angle, side, angle. I heard somebody saying two angles. That's great. That's correct. If you're given two angles, you will always use the law of sines. Good. But angle, side, angle, the side between the two angles, that's law of sines. All right, so we've got the law of sines set up here. Angle, side, angle is law of sines. So that means that we've got C is 60 degrees. That means that the A over the sine of 45 degrees 
is equal to B over the sine of 75 degrees is equal to 10.2 over the sine of 60. Because I'm looking for the sides, I'm going to put use this configuration where the un unknown value is in the numerator. If we're looking for an angle, then we're going to flip it and use the other derivation of the law of sines. Because if you're looking for the piece in the numerator, it's just easier to solve. The process is easier. Now, we're going to do these one at a time. And I'm going to tell you that it's a good idea when you're solving oblique triangles, it's a good idea to always find the smallest piece first. We're going to develop that, that idea through the, through the um, process here, but it's always a good idea to find the smallest piece first. So which one of these is smaller, side A or side B? Why is A smaller? Because it's across from the smallest angle, right? So I'm going to find A first. A over the sine of 45 is equal to 10.2 over the sine of 60. Now you don't always have to find the smallest piece first. In this case, you don't have to. All right, you don't have to, but there are some cases where if you don't find the smallest piece first, you miss the problem. So it's very important to just get into a habit when you're solving triangles, find the smallest missing piece first. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I promise I'm gonna explain that. It's gonna make sense. If, at a later date. So we're going to multiply both sides by the sine of 45 degrees and we're going to get 10.2 times the sine of 45 divided by the sine of 60 is equal to A. And you can punch this whole thing into your calculator. One, don't do it in pieces, 10.2 times the sine of 45 divided by the sine of 60. If you don't have a calculator, grab one. You need to practice the keystrokes here. You will not get these correct. There's lots of room for mistakes. We're going to, uh, the next two weeks, calculator every day is going to be important. I know we're coming out of a unit where we didn't use one at all, so. 10.2 times the sine of 45 divided by the sine of 60. Check your calculator and make sure it is in degree mode. If the mode is in radians here, you get the wrong answers. So make sure you press your mode key, right? And that degrees is highlighted and not radians. Calculator defaults to radian mode, so you've got to change it. All right, so what is A approximately? Give me one decimal place. 8.3. All right, so A is about 8.3. And I'm going to use the other law of sines now. B divided by the sine of 75 degrees equals 10.2 over the sine of 60. Cross multiply, B is going to be equal to 10.2 times the sine of 75 degrees divided by the sine of 60. I said cross multiply. We're really multiplying both sides by sine of 75. So it cancels on the left, and we're left with that. So B is about how much? 11.4. B is about 11.4. Now, as a last step, it's always a good idea to make sure your triangle makes sense. Like, for example, if you forgot to put your calculator into radian mode, you're going to get wrong answers here. These answers won't be correct. If you plug it into your triangle and look at it, it might tell you. So let's plug these values in to our actual triangle, 11.4, and A is about 8.3. Does that triangle make sense? How can, you, how can we tell it makes sense? Smallest side is across from the smallest angle, and the largest side is across from the largest angle. That's just a check. That doesn't guarantee that your answers are correct but it gives you a fighting chance, right? Um, if you used radians instead of degrees, you might get something that was nonsensical. You might get a, you know, you might get a negative side value or something like that if you had 
uh, radians instead of degrees. All right? That's law of sines. Let's look at another one. The little Greek letter there, that's alpha, by the way. Alpha is uh, the Greek letter for A. So you can put a capital A there if you like. So everybody get your triangle sketched. Always draw a picture. Even if you're not given a picture, draw a picture. Little A is always across from alpha or capital A. Little B is always opposite of beta or capital B. And little C is always opposite gamma or capital C. Sometimes you'll see Greek letters instead of capital English letters. All right? Now, what piece of information can we find immediately? Alpha, right? We know alpha is... 63 plus 38 is 101, which means alpha is 79. I don't know why that wrote up there, but it's alpha is 79. My circle's in the wrong place. Seventy-nine. Okay. Now, the original information given to us was in what configuration? Angle, angle, side. But if we're given two angles, we know we're using the law of sines, right? So we know we're going to be using the law of sines to solve this triangle based on what we were given at the beginning. And so we're going to set it up the way we did last time. I'm going to kind of maybe take some shorter cuts this time, but we're going to have A divided by the sine of 79 is equal to B divided by the sine of 38 is equal to C, which is 12.1, divided by the sine of 63. So we got A, B, and C. If you guys want to label those just to make sure. All right, which one should we solve for first? B, because B is opposite the smallest angle. We know that uh, that's the smallest part that's missing. Again, you don't have to do that in this triangle, but it's a good habit to ask yourself what's the smallest piece because there's some scenarios where if you don't find that smallest piece first, you're going to miss the problem. All right, so we'll use this proportion. Straight up, multiply both sides by sine of 38, and we get B equals 12.1 times the sine of 38 divided by the sine of 63. And approximately to one decimal place, how much is B? What's the value be? About 8.4. So far it makes sense, right? 8.4 has to be less than 12.1. So you can check yourself on, along the way. All right, and then if I'm solving using these two things, can y'all see how to cross multiply those without rewriting it? It'll save you a little time. Multiply both sides by sine of 79, and we're going to get A equals 12.1 times the sine of 79 divided by the sine of 63. So A is approximately how much? 13.3. Does that make sense? 
Can this side be 13.3? The largest side is across from the largest angle. The smallest side is across from the smallest angle. The three pieces of information that we were missing in this triangle are there. So the triangle is solved. Okay? Y'all okay with that? Law of science. Y'all remember this at all from geometry, algebra 2? <laughs> Did somebody say, I finally understand something? Payton. All right. Now, here we're given kind of a generic uh, triangle. I wish the triangle wasn't even here um, because some of the homework problems and some of the test problems, you're just going to be given this information. So you've got to be able to draw a triangle from that information. Um, there's my alpha is A, right? That's capital A. So it's opposite this side. Angle B or beta, they're using beta and gamma here. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha, alpha, beta, gamma. That's the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. A, B, C. All right, so if you label this information that they gave you in a triangle that you sketch, alpha is 34 degrees, so we're looking at 34 degrees here. B is 2.3, and A is 1.2. Now, what's different about this triangle right out of the blocks? I'm, I'm given two sides, which tells me something's different, right? What's the configuration of these three pieces of given information? Miller? What's the configuration of these three pieces of information? You said it a second ago. Side, side, and then angle. Okay, because it's side, side, angle, I've got to be where? Side, side, angle, I'm going to use the law of sines, but I've got to be aware that there might be no solutions here. I might not have a triangle. In other words, if I gave you um, a, a stick that's 2.3 feet long and a stick that's 1.2 feet long and told you that there had to be an angle outside of those two pieces that was 34 degrees, you may not be able to construct a triangle out of it. There might not be a triangle that has these uh, measurements. The law of sines will tell us that, but we know we're going to use the law of sines, so let's immediately just set up the law of sines. And this time, because I'm looking for angles, right? I know I'm looking for angles because these two things are out of play. That's two unknowns, right? Um, so let's do the sine of 34 degrees divided by 1.2 is equal to the sine of beta divided by 2.3. Said 3, wrote 9. Okay. Now I'm going to isolate the unknown, so multiply both sides by 2.3. 2.3 times the sine of 34 degrees divided by 1.2 is equal to the sine of beta. Now go back to when we were solving for an angle in right triangles, what do we have to use if we're solving for an angle instead of solving for sine? You've got to use the inverse sine, right? So in your calculators, what is the inverse sine of 2.3 sine 34 divided by 1.2. You can put that all in as one keystroke. You done, Jacob? It tells you that there is an Error. Does everybody get error there? What does that tell us? That there is no triangle that has these three pieces of information. Okay? 
Now, let me, let me show you why. Let me show you why. Just take this part that's inside your calculator, or inside the inverse sign, and see what the value of that is. What's the value of this argument? What is 2.3 times the sine of 34 divided by 1.2? It's 1.1, roughly, if we round to the tenth place. So this is 1.1, okay? Can the sine of an angle be 1.1? We just finished tr trig graphs, right? What does the sine of a graph do? Bounces around between 1 and negative 1. Can it ever go above 1? No. Not without some kind of phase shift or vertical shift. And we don't have any vertical shift going on over here. The sine of B is confined from negative 1 to positive 1. So there's no way it can be 1.1. It's not possible. And that tells us that we have no triangle in this particular instance of the law of sines, side-side angle. Side-side angle can be not, no triangle, it can be one triangle, or it can be two triangles. Okay, so let's look at the next side-side angle case. All right, which is this one. Given information is beta is 47 degrees, side A is 3.5, side B is 3.7. And I kind of let the cat out of the bag already, but by telling you this was another condition of the side side angle, but 47 degrees, 3.5 and 3.7, those values. When you label your triangle, you're gonna see this is side, side, angle, in that order. Okay, now just as a, as a pause, pause for a second. What piece of information would give me side, angle, side? What angle would I have to know in order to have side, angle, side in this one? I'd have to know gamma, right? Angle C would make it side, angle, side. Um, but I'm not given angle C or gamma there. I'm given side, side, angle configuration here. So if it was side, angle, side, we're using a law of cosines. But this is side, side, angle again. Yes, sir? Well, in whatever order they're given. Yeah, you, you could go right to left or, you know, left to right. I think the last one, if you read it right to left, it'd be angle side side, which is the same as side side angle. It's just a little less friendly to right. <laughs> yeah, it's a private school. We don't do the angle side side case here. We do side side angle. Okay. That's right. You don't want any of that in your notebook. So this is the side-side angle case. That's the ambiguous case. Beware, we might have no triangles. We might have one triangle. We might have two triangles. Okay, so let's go again. Uh, I'm looking for an angle, so I'm going to use the sign on top, and I'm going to find alpha because alpha is opposite 3.5. Sine of alpha over 3.5 is equal to the sine of 47 over 3.7. Right? Is everybody good with that? Now we can't we can't use these two because that's two unknowns. That would give me three unknowns in an equation. Uh, uh, two unknowns in one equation, and then that's, that's no good. So side-side angle is going to force you to do a particular angle first. And that's where the problem comes in, because we don't know if that angle is acute or if that angle is obtuse. So if we multiply both sides by 3.5 here, we get sine of alpha equals 
3.5 times the sine of 47 divided by 3.7, which means that alpha is the inverse sine of this quantity, 3.5 sine 47 over 3.7. What would you get, Miller? About 43.8. Okay. Now, just as a as a side note here, let's let me uh, get you to do something. Let's do another angle. Let's do let's alpha prime. What is 180 minus 43.8? 180 minus 43.8. 136.2. I'm gonna put a question mark beside that. Because that's what alpha would be if this is an obtuse triangle. And here's why it's tricky. Take your calculators and do sine of 43.8 and do the sine of 136.2. What do you notice about those two sine values? They're equal. What are they equal to approximately? Four decimal places. Right? They're both equal to that. Agreed? Does everybody get that in your calculators? Now, but if you do the inverse sign, do this, inverse sign of 0 0.6921, does it give you 136.2? It only gives you what? 43.8. So, without having, a, you know, we don't know if the inverse sine is giving us an acute angle or an obtuse angle. Because if you take the inverse sine of that value, which belongs to both of those things, um, you get that. Now this goes back to the fact, guys, that the reference angle, pay attention, the reference angle of 136.2 is 43.8. And so the sine is positive in the first quadrant, the sine is positive in the second quadrant, so the sine of two obtuse of an obtuse angle and an acute angle is always going to be the same. So I don't know if I'm finding an obtuse angle or an acute angle, because the calculator only gives us which one, the acute. So with the side side angle scenario, we always have to look for this angle right here. Now let's go back. Could this possibly be? a second triangle with the given information. With this given information, could alpha be 136.2 degrees? Jacob, you're shaking your head. Why? Yes, that works for this one. What's another reason? Because 47 plus 136.2 is m more than 180 degrees, so it can't be possible. Okay, because 136 plus 47 is greater than 180, um, this particular law of sines ambiguous case uh, does not have a second triangle. Okay, no second triangle, only one triangle. All right, so we know, so we know alpha is 43.8. What can we do next? What can we do next? Come on, y'all stay with me. Find gamma. What's the value of gamma going to be? 
43.8 plus 47. Take that away from 180. 90.8. Is that right? It's 89.2. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'd have problems if your calculator was spitting out that value. All right, so we're going to go back to the given information, which was sine of 47 divided by 3.7 is equal to. No, let me, let me reverse that because I'm looking for the side. Let's do 3.7 over sine of 47 is equal to C over sine 89.2. And we got to hurry. So we'll multiply both sides by sine of 89.2, 3.7 times the sine of 89.2 divided by the sine of 47 is equal to C, which means C is about how much? 5.1. Does that make sense? Does my triangle make sense? It does, right? Okay, so here's a side-side angle case where there's only one triangle. We need to quickly roll through this next one and um, see what a two-triangle scenario looks like. What is this? Okay, we already went through that. All right, here we go. Theta is 26. Alpha is, excuse me, A is 18, B is 11. And uh, that's side side angle, right? Side side angle is the law of sines, the ambiguous case. So it might be no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles three scenarios. We've already looked at no triangle. We've already looked at one triangle. I hope this one's two triangles. I haven't worked this far yet today, so we'll see. <laughs> I think it is. All right, so we're forced to find alpha first. Sine of alpha equals, excuse me, sine of alpha divided by 18 equals sine of 26 divided by 11. And that means that the sine of alpha is 18 times the sine of 26 divided by 11. And alpha is the inverse sine of this. What's the inverse sine of 18 times the sine of 26 over 11? How much? 45.8 degrees. All right, now we just we need to stop right there because I need to know if there's another alpha that could have worked. 145, excuse me, 45.8 in the second quadrant is 180 minus 45.8, which is what? What's 180 minus 45.8? How much? 134.2. Do I have room for that angle? I do, don't I? Okay, so I've got two alphas. One of them is 45.8 and one of them is 134.2. Because 134.2 plus, plus 26 is less than 180, so there is a second triangle. This is the confusing case. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna take that 
yellow triangle. I'm going to take that thing and I'm going I'm to come back to it in a second. And I'm going to solve this first one where alpha is 45.8. So alpha is 45.8. What does that mean gamma is? What is gamma? If alpha is 45.8, we need to work quickly. What is gamma? Say it again. 108.2. You're not going to say anything? this time. Okay. Okay. And then I can find uh, little c, right? I can find little chase. Sine of... No, let's do, let's do the opposite. 11 over sine of 26 using our given information equals C divided by the sine of 108.2. And that tells me that C is equal to 11 times the sine 108.2 divided by the sine of 26. C is equal to what? 23.8. That makes sense, right? So this is 23.8. That makes sense because the smallest side is across from the smallest angle and the largest side is across from the largest angle. Okay? Now quickly, right below this, draw another triangle, okay? Draw another triangle that looks like this one. I got colors, you don't, I apologize for that. So um, we were given 26 and 11 and 18. And we said that our alternate alpha is what? 134.2. So this angle is 134.2 in my other triangle, second triangle. Which means my new C, y'all hang tight, my new C, we'll call it C prime. Angle C is 134.2 plus 26, that's 160. Point two, right? Eighteen point nineteen point eight degrees. So to find C prime, I use uh, eleven divided by the sine of twenty six equals C prime divided by sine of nineteen point eight, and that'll give me my second triangle measurements. All right, so what it would look like, and I apologize for rushing through this, but what it would look like is we have two triangles. The two triangles actually look like that. But the three pieces of given information are the same in both of the two triangles. All right? You'll work on this in class tomorrow.